Hey everyone, I'm Adam Harrington from Learn Your Land, and I'm really excited to be sharing this particular video with you today. In it are clips from a recent presentation that I offered, and it was entitled Introduction to Wild Mushrooms, and it was held at Jennings Environmental Education Center in western Pennsylvania, specifically in the Butler County Slippery Rock area. Now if you're not familiar with this area, it contains a prairie, which is a pretty unique habitat for Pennsylvania. It's about 20 acres of prairie. Now whenever you think of prairies, you usually think of Kansas or Nebraska, not necessarily Pennsylvania. Here in Pennsylvania, we have a lot of deciduous forests, a few scattered old growth forests. We have a lot of gently rolling hills and slopes. We have some deep gorges, a lot of streams, creeks, lakes, but not necessarily prairies, especially ones that haven't been too manipulated by industrial agriculture or development. But we do have some in the western part of the state. Now in this presentation, we didn't really focus on prairie ecology. We talked about mushrooms. And we didn't just talk about choice edible mushrooms, medicinal mushrooms. We didn't just talk about poisonous species, though we did focus on those towards the end of the presentation. We actually started with, you know, what the heck is a mushroom? We talked about mushroom anatomy, mushroom biology, and the roles that various species of fungi play in our ecosystem. And I think this is a pretty good place to start when learning about mushrooms, because if you are looking for your choice edible mushrooms, for example, Pleurotus ostriatus, the common oyster mushroom, well, you might want to know what it's doing because you're going to have a whole lot easier time finding it if you know what it's doing. For example, it's breaking down organic material, specifically logs. And so you don't want to look necessarily in grasslands or on the forest floor where the leaf litter is. You want to look on logs and you might find Pleurotus ostriatus. We also talked about parasitic fungi. We talked about mycorrhizal fungi, the great symbionts in our forest, the ones that work mutualistically with various plant and tree species. But mycorrhizal fungi aren't just found in the forest floor, they're also found in prairies. And actually the health of a prairie is dependent on the fungi. And without fungi, there probably wouldn't even be a prairie ecosystem. Why is this? Well, in this presentation, I explain how this connection works. When you look out at this prairie, as I mentioned before, that prairie wouldn't look like that without fungi in the soil. There's a Kansas researcher who studies prairie ecology. And he studied over 100 tall grass species in the Kansas prairie and found that 100% of them absolutely had a fungal partner. They absolutely required it. Without these mushrooms then, without these grasses, there would be no habitat for the massasauga rattlesnake and all the animals that it eats, all the insects, all the wildflowers as well. These are honey mushrooms. They're parasitizing a birch tree. Now, it's not going to kill the tree outright. It's just going to weaken it. And then maybe a secondary environmental condition like drought or a viral infection or a bacterial infection or another fungal infestation might weaken the tree enough. But honey mushrooms produce one of the most persistent pathogens in a temperate forest. It's known as Armillaria root rot. If you see little black strings through the forest on various down logs, I don't know if you've ever seen them, but start looking at various logs. You'll see black shoestring-like strands. Those are essentially the roots, they're known as rhizomorphs, that colonize that log. And they give rise to these mushrooms but they can take down trees eventually after they weaken them enough. Now, just because they're parasitic doesn't mean they're not also good guys. So research shows that even parasitic mushrooms, once they weaken the tree and bring it down, they can act as saprophytes as well. Then they can break it down even farther. So they're just like finishing a dirty business. But they can also act as mycorrhizal species as well. Even the honey mushroom, it's been shown that it can hook up with various orchid species and help get them started. And this is very easy to do. You just take a mushroom cap, like this one right here, and you'll cut it off. And the basic premise behind it is you essentially just put it down on the surface and wait. That's it. Now it gets a little more detailed. And over time, the spores are going to drop and it'll leave something that looks like this. Now there's a glass over this because, and I don't always do this, but you're told to do it. You don't want the air current to take away some of the spores if the cap is raised a little bit, and you don't want this cap to dry out. And so if you keep like a glass or a bowl over it or some kind of cover, you might produce a much better spore print than you would if you did not do that step. And it might take four hours, it might take six hours. I typically do it overnight. I'll just cut the caps off, put them on, you can put them on foil, you can put them on a piece of paper, you can put them on a plate, a piece of glass, like if you have like a mirror, you just put it right on there. However, if you're using a white piece of paper and it's going to drop a white spore print, you might not see it. So what you can do is just use two pieces of paper. You can cut the cap in half, or you can use two caps and harvest and two mushrooms and just do it on white and do it on black. <laughs> so there are key characteristics about these Amanita mushrooms. And I mentioned this before. Look for the skirt around the stem. 
and look for this sac right here, known as the vulva. Also, you might see patches on the cat. If you see all three, it might be an amanita species. They drop a white spore print. There are other key identifying features, but if you see something that looks like this with that ring, with a sac underneath as well, because almost all amanita species have at least that vulva. They don't all have this, but they will generally have this. Sometimes you'll see patches on the top. It's probably an amanita species. It might be completely edible, but it might be completely lethal as well. Death caps, not just a heavy metal band name, deadly mushrooms. <laughs> Jack-o'-lanterns, people who think they found chicken of the woods, that orange mushroom, but it has gills on the underside, it's probably the jack-o'-lantern. Or if you're looking for chanterelle mushrooms, another choice edible, and it has gills on the underside, it's jack-o'-lantern. This is a toxic mushroom, but it probably won't kill you. I know many people who have eaten this mushroom. Friends who have eaten mushrooms, people I've worked with who have eaten this mushroom. Not a good time for about two to three days. It's got a compound known as Eludin S, which actually has been studied for its chemotherapeutic properties cytotoxin against cancer cells, but it also gives you a pretty horrible time for about two to three days. This mushroom glows in the dark. If your mushroom's glowing in the dark, it's probably not here. <laughs> this one drops a cream-colored spore print. It grows in clusters near wood. Notice this dense cluster right here. If you're looking for chanterelles, I'm going to show you a picture of them in a second, you're not going to find chanterelles growing in clusters like this with these true gills. Notice these gills right here, because in a couple slides I'm going to show you things that don't have gills. What these things do is they act as food for the immune system. They are immune system modulators. They regulate the immune system. They can stimulate the immune system or bring it back down. It's very unique. Many plants stimulate the immune system. Echinacea, elderberry, golden seal, garlic even. You think you're getting sick? Take some of that stuff. Boom, it'll jack it up. Other things depress immunosuppressants. A lot of medications do that for autoimmune conditions like multiple sclerosis, even allergies. Even things like Alzheimer's and diabetes. Medicinal mushrooms have the ability to be dual directional. They can find out where your immune system is and help to regulate it and keep it in that homeostasis point. So real quick, one of them is chaga. It is notice the bleakness. This grows on birch trees. This has been used for centuries in traditional Siberian medicine. You can find it here in Pennsylvania. Look in birch forest. It looks like a piece of black charcoal on a birch tree with a fiery orange interior. I have extracts right here that I take pretty much every single day. You can make teas out of it as well. And I'll talk about how to make medicines out of them. But it almost makes a dark, rich, black-like coffee color whenever you make the tea out of it. It doesn't taste like coffee. It actually tastes somewhat mild, almost like a black tea. A lot of research on this against melanoma, breast cancer, lung cancer, and prostate cancer, and diabetes as well. It helps to lower the blood sugar response postprandially. So after you eat a meal and your blood sugar is spiked, it helps to suppress that to some degree. So as you can see, there's a whole lot to talk about when it comes to the fungal kingdom. And we're only just scratching the surface here. If you're interested in learning way more about mushrooms and even plants, I encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Also, if you want to head on over to learnyourland.com, that would be great. Sign up for the newsletter. I put out a lot of information routinely on various plant and mushroom species, and I update you on these videos. Also, I have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash learnyourland, that I routinely update. And if you're ever in this area, ever in Pennsylvania, it'd be great to see you and meet you at one of the events that I lead. I lead several events throughout the year, in fact, several events per month on plant identification, mushroom identification, foraging, and just various ways to interact with their land. Thanks so much for watching this video. I truly appreciate it. I hope your mushroom season is going well for you this year. It's going pretty well for me. And I can only hope that you're experiencing similar results in your quest to find all the mushrooms that you desire. Thanks again. I'll see you in the next video.